That works for me. Alrighty. Do you want to? Well, that. Do you want to sing? Do you want to? Do you want to say the name? Stars of Stairs and Screen bit, or do you want to say the other bit? What to say? Sorry. Um, Language. I'll do the stars of stage and screen, you do the other bit. Yeah. Stars of stage and screen. Cindy Lost. Stars of stage and screen. Is she Australian? Stars of stage and screen. She smiles and most winks. Stars of stage and screen. Cindy Chandler is a liar. Stars of stage and screen. Don't tell anyone. Stars of stage and screen. Oceanic 815. Stars of stage and screen. Boxes in a cage. Stars of stage and screen. Life cycle of the scarab beetle. Welcome to Space Station USB 7. No relation. On the edge of the trouble belt. I am 261. 2626. And I am 1561414. We are holographic two parts scanning radio waves of ether. 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 Went to Earth number nine and grabbed these DVDs of America and TV show Lost. What is a Cindy? The Earthling call us spoilers tonight. Star of stage and screen number lost. So, um, 15. So, 15. So, 1 5. So one five. Um, what what do we know about Cindy Chandler? We I will tell you why I chose her if you like. Please do. Because most of the characters on Lost started off mysterious and ended up with a backstory. So you sort of knew who they were. And sort of the opposite thing happened with Cindy, where she started off as a supporting, like a necessary supporting character, like the only um, flight attendant that we meet properly and then somehow became mysterious once on the island and uh didn't get any flashbacks or anything but yeah most of the characters there's three there was cindy libby and ilana who could have worked for this but cindy is the only one without a flashback of her own technically so she's from the tv show lost she is why don't you tell me what she's uh cindy chandler airline, you know? airline, airline oceanic flight attendant and broke up of a mysterious island in the Pacific. She was abducted by the island's natives and assimilated into their society. Chandler became the critic of her fellow abductees, the children Zach and Emma. What else do you want? Chandler. I do find it weird that that's a surname. Chandler. Yeah, never established in show. Um, The weirdest thing about Cindy is the book. You read about the book. Uh, Gary Troop's novel Bad Twin. Yes. To Cindy, my highest flying angel. Yes. I don't know what any of that means, though. This is a guy, Gary Troop, is a fictional man. Is he the pilot? Um, no, it was established that he was, there's a man in the first episode who sucked into the wind turbine. No, not a wind turbine, just a turbine, and um, explodes. And I believe that's Gary Troop. So he was on the plane, and then they released a book saying, like, oh, this, you know, this man, it's hard to explain, this man from this fictional show in the real world, we've now published his book because he's gone missing. And uh, Cindy is the the only sort of connection to the actual show. It's pretty meta. It is. All kinds of meta. Um, Chandler aligned with the man in black to ensure the safety of the children. It appears maybe she was Australian. Yeah, I think the actress is from New Zealand, but they she never... She's Canadian, the actress. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that out the window. Yeah, I would just assume she's Australian. Um, that's one of my facts. Um... <laughs> Once she went missing in season two, um, it did become a bit modish for me. Like I got, I used to read, I'm the opposite with TV shows now, but I used to read heavy spoilers for Lost, so I knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened, and that excited me for some reason, whereas now I do the opposite. But um, I remember sort of whenever a name would pop up as if she was going to be coming back, I would be excited because there would be a, you just don't know where she went or what happened. When did When was her last appearance then? She was in it across the show. Did she turn up at the end in the church, spoiler? No. Heavy loss spoilers for this as well, and heavy Twin Peaks spoilers sometimes. Matthew and Fox's simple. middle name is Chandler. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Um, a Chandler is a candle maker, I learned. Yes. And there is a guy on the show uh, who appears in these like um, science videos, and his surname is always something to do with a candle. Marvin Candle? Yes. Edgar Hallowax. Mark Wickmund. 
Yeah. Dr. And Pierre more. Chong. Yes, that's his, that's his real name. Chong. Chong. Am I saying that right? Dr. Pierre Chong. Yes, that is exactly correct. Cindy is the only surviving employee of Oceanic Airlines that was on flight 815. Correct. <clears throat> So somebody's gone through all the characters of Lost and matched them up with with the goddesses, I think, ancient Egyptian goddesses. And they say that Cindy is Hecate, a goddess depicted as a frog-headed woman. Hecate is associated with the development of the fetus in the womb, with birth and resurrection. Some of these associations may have come from witnessing frogs emerging from the mud, um, somewhat akin to the life cycle of a scarab beetle, as interpreted through the god Kepri. That's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Yeah, that is a bit of a stretch, but that's what Lost is all about. There is exactly. a big um, fertility thing going on on the island. They had a statue of a fertility god okay. called Towerette. Is that the one with um, the foot? Yes. Photos. Um, my notes, my facts about Cindy um, that I, I created myself, even though they are real. Uh, and you've said some of them. Cindy is one of the only survivors of Flight 815. Hey, I said that one. The, no, you said the only uh, crew. I'm saying the entire plane. <laughs> Out of the full plane over the course of like all of Lost, it goes from being an, an entire plane of people to like, I think about 11 people are still alive after that plane crash at the end of the series. And how about this for a reverse Roswell? We have a reverse Roswell on our hands. Tell me more. Originally in the pilot episode, there was a scene with a character called Shannon and she was supposed to be crying over Cindy's body, but they decided to change it and uh, keep her alive because they realised they were going to need a flight attendant later on to explain the black box stuff to the tail section. So she got unkilled. Do flight attendants really know that much more about black boxes than the average man on the street? No, but she was aware of that specific black box's um, trajectory. Like, they'd gone off course for like two hours, basically. Ah. But the, uh, the crew knew, but the, the losties didn't. Cindy Chandler is a liar and was an other all along. The big argument against this is compelling. If she was another, then she willingly allowed herself to be in a plane crash that she surely could have had little guarantee of surviving. Yes, I do have also that note. Uh, there's two existing theories about Cindy that I'll touch on in the clips. Um, she was either, she was already working with the others or she was pregnant at some point are the two things that people uh, claim with Cindy. And I will give pros and cons to those throughout the clips. Please do. Um, she is also one of the only characters to appear in, only, one of the few non-main characters to appear in. I think like, well, I think she only misses one season. I think she's only not in season four. She has and, um, printing money, isn't it? She basically does nothing and gets in every episode of the show. Basically, yeah. No, she pops up at least once or twice a season across the entire show. But she's one of the very few who is in not in the uh, finale of the show. Mm, how about this? Cindy was a genuine stewardess that survived the crash and was taken by the others and quickly converted. Is it because Cindy was on Jacob's list and Jack wasn't? Is that the nature of the list? Is it the, is it those people who are able to comprehend the other's agenda and those that are able to be converted? I don't think Cindy was ever on Jacob's list. <laughs> or, any, or anyone's list. <coughs> No, just our list. Um, Jacob is an island god who is... Um, I really like Lost. <laughs> it's a great show, I isn't really it? Like, it's a great premise. It started off relatively normal, in a sense. Simil kind of similar to Twin Peaks. So it started off as a murder mystery. You know, that's all there was to it in episode one or two. You could sense the world was a bit weird. Yeah. And they were dropping hints and stuff. But generally, it's quite normal. And um, that also continued on with Lost. That, you know, season one was about survivors of the plane crash with some weird things thrown in there. And by season five, they're like time travel into the 70s. Um, so it's great. And yes, yeah, Cindy has a very passive approach to everything that happens to her. She's a quiet one, say. isn't she? She's accepting. She certainly is. Either that or she's a consummate professional and she's still trying to represent Oceanic Girl. Oceanic Girl. <laughs> yes. This could all reflect very badly on... With the, with the plane breaking in half and, and, and crashing onto that island, this could all look very bad on Oceanic. 
airlines. I better really double down on being nice to these people. I'm afraid you've been fired, rescued, and then fired by Oceanic. We don't think we don't think your last six months was really up uh, up to scratch, Cindy. This is Mr. Echo similar. came to you and asked you specifically to, to mother these two random children. Yes, which you did again. Woman of a word. <laughs> I will look after these children through the 1970s and 80s forever. Um, How about you give the good people some context? One five. Sure. I have actually helpfully for once. Um, done something called between the clips so I can give you some context between the clips as to where she's been I like that um, but the context is this is a TV show about a plane crash and within that you see flashbacks to the characters lives not Cindy's though because she is a is C-lister at the very best um, but that's what I like about Lost even the even the small characters have an air of mystery to them yeah, they don't tell you now do they what about the polar bear solved how was that solved? It was uh, brought to the island. Just let loose? Yeah, basically. They, uh, they in the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of hippies there doing experiments and they wanted to see, there's, a, there's an ice chamber, basically, with a time machine in it that you have to push a wheel to, to operate. So they were basically training polar bears to do that because it's a icy chamber and it's really cold and they could live down there. So is this uh, a time-displaced polar bear then? What? Is this a time-displaced polar bear? Uh, that one is not um, one of the polar bears we see is a time displaced one so that's the one <laughs> they find in the Tunisian desert <laughs> time displaced polar bear is is what I come to this show for good band then but now uh, basically they got purged so the polar bears were Beedie roaming Beedie. free after that clip one Jack were is looking out dead? of the window a trolley dolly walks up in a blue shirt and says so how's the drink it's good that wasn't a very strong reaction says the flight attendant it is quiet because the plane is going to explode jack is wearing, jack is wearing a tie shush says cindy and ha hands jack two little bottles of booze he looks around and says, don't tell no one says cindy this of course breaks some critical faa rule says fox she smiles and, and winks and walks away there is smiling oh fox uh, <laughs> fox chandler yeah he is as much as i don't stray towards the main character a lot um matthew both matthew fox and jack are phenomenal in their response we see it in one of these clips and he, he'll just go from naught to a hundred <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly throughout the show everybody Great. Lock is good um, as well, but 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 Fox is unhinged, isn't he? Yeah. Flirty Cindy is my first note. And Jack gives her a cheeky look. This is um I think they're setting up a little bit. Jack's not not your average hero in that he's a bit of an alcoholic womanizer. Yeah, he's he's a flawed hero that we have to have these days. You can't just have a good good one. They have to have they have to be a rotter, like yes. that McNulty out of the wire. Exactly. Auntie and uncle hero. Um <laughs> Or that Punisher off Netflix. Oh yeah, Iron Fist. Um, something, Cindy is the first character ever to speak in a flashback. Something, something Cindy. Yes, <laughs> something dark. Um, <laughs> yeah, she speaks, she's the first one on Lost. Again, she's holding these big titles for such a small character. She'll have another one of those later. Mm. Another first. Um, first jungle title. poop. What? First jungle poop. Exactly. FJP. First cannibal. Um, <laughs> JP. My other theory in this way is that um, she knows the plane is, a, is about to crack and has taken a shine to Jack. So she offers him another drink to hopefully uh, help him either black out or knock him, you know, well, then, knock him, yeah, to make the death a bit quicker for him. As she's walking help. away, she just whispers, go limp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then what, another what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah. Um, the con to that, as you've already covered, is that she'd have to be pretty hardcore to not want to get on a crashing plane. Nah, for the she's, wearing a, she's wearing a, a um, she's wearing a parachute under her uh, under a getup. Well, within the show, the others, the super Jacoby others, like the completely religious sort of like fanatic, will pretty much do anything. One guy dies three times for Jacob. <laughs> Oh, that's commitment. So uh, there's nothing to say that this this isn't out of the realms of possibility within Lost that she was um, she was on the plane to ensure some kind of order and to make sure it did in fact uh, crash. And she did this they just already... by willpower because she was yeah. nowhere near the cockpit. 
at any point. Oh no, she is. This is the thing oh. um, that I'll bring up in a moment. But yeah, Jacob, Jacob, basically, the, the plane crashed for several reasons. It crashed because Desmond didn't press the button that saves the world. Yeah, that causes all the magnetism that actually physically crashed the plane. Who made this show? J.J. Uh, Abrams, technically. Now, is he the one started. that's been... Is he the one who made Buffy? No, he did uh, Felicity and Alias beforehand, I think. Mm. And then afterwards, he got big on... Like, he did a... St- he was, like, heavily involved with the Star Wars. Yeah, he made that shitty Star Wars, the middle one. <laughs> and, um, is he also the one... Is he the one that made the DC... Um, the DC Avengers, and then he got in trouble for, for, for being a Roman? <laughs> Still the Buffy one, which is why we're not doing the Harmony cast right now. Um, is he, did he make Firefly, JJ? <laughs> yes, sure. Did he? He um, certainly did. Buffy the flight attendant. Is 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 he? So JJ is is he the the founder of Bellwether Pictures? <laughs> I don't did even he, know what that is. Did he do Angel? Yes. <laughs> he was the one who fired all of his pregnant staff. Now hold on, JJ Adams, he's the good one then. Yeah, for now he's good. I don't think he's I think he's covered. I think he's a good guy. What did JJ Abrams actually do then that, that was of note except for that that crappy middle Star Wars film? That also wasn't him. That was a Welsh guy. No, Ryan I didn't, Adams was it Ryan somebody did did Ryan one and Johnson. three and he did Oh no no, he did one and three and the other lad yeah. did two, right? Correct. That's a fucking he, uh, shit show anyway. Is he talking about? <laughs> it's his, not good, is it? His his trick, right? His trick is the mystery mystery box trick isn't it where he doesn't tell you anything about what's going on that's his thing well right? interestingly there is a subplot on lost where uh, there is a, a mystery box and AJ then was the mystery box ted talk he's not a ted talk called the mystery box yeah well he kind of like dipped out after i think the last time he's really involved is the start of season three and then it's a guy called damon lindelof and a guy oh yeah the guy, who made, the guy who makes this chocolates yes that one um but he all weird he does look like uh, Heston Blumenthal who is a chef um, but he's done like The Leftovers and uh, Watchmen oh yeah I only watched the first episode of that Here the shows on. they've done since basically have an air of lost about them like the, there's like a weird premise Mystery Box Storytelling the Mystery Box is a method of storytelling which J.J. Adams does whatever he wants starts a whole bunch of plots and never wraps them up um, doesn't really care very much about making it make sense or even be interesting and then does a really dodgy finale which uh, shits all over the rest of everything else That's yeah I wholeheartedly it. agree with that so I think, the um, first of all he has nothing really he had he was only really involved with Lost when it was like kind of the more simple mysteries like the biggest mysteries in the first two seasons are like you know what's in the hatch why are the polar bears what's that monster what is that wind monster like, what's that giant foot five, it is. basically like, okay half of them are back in time half of them aren't on the island anymore who's this woman that knows everything who's Jacob this island god um, how are they back in time some of them can't be killed by certain people so he basically dipped out before he got super wacky so Linda Loft oh. is the wacky one although his stuff after that is that more wacky I couldn't get through Watchmen everyone said it was great but I, I only watched a couple of episodes it wasn't great yeah I've not really watched it yet but I've heard very good things about it I imagine I will like it but I did the same thing with the left though I watched the first two seasons of The Leftovers and I still haven't watched the last season and that's very uh, they're not similar to Lost but the premise is usually something abnormal happens within the real world. Yeah, and then you can just do whatever you want because you never have to say what happens. And then little by little, you. Re- I just watched that crappy one on Netflix. I think I was talking about where it's like time displacement stuff, and uh, it was really good for like the first four episodes. And then they had to start revealing bits about the the, the world, and it just got really cheesy really quickly. Is that the Squid Game? No, no, I like the Squid Game. The Squid Game were those two Paul runs. Red Squid. Have you seen that show? Where there's the two Red Paul Game. Rudd? There's no show Red where there's two Paul Rudds. I've seen this Mac and a... Cheese, in which Paul Rudd plays Mac and Cheese. No, there is a show where uh, on Netflix, and it's not a comedy. There's a show where he gets cloned, but doesn't know it, and he is. There's just two Paul Rudds. Is it called Two Paul Rudds? It's called it Living with been. Yourself, a middle-aged yeah. man who etc. etc. 
But it is, yeah, it's just, oh, look, there's two polar. Does one of them have a beard? Probably. It's a different no, one of them is a bit geek. Ones. One of them is a bit geek and has glasses. But anyway, you read that movie um, already. It's called Multiplicity. It has um, it has thingy in it. Michael Keaton. All right. That brings me back around to a fact, actually. Um, <laughs> Jack was supposed to die in the first episode of Lost. As That's a big, never like, happening. Twist. There's no yeah. way they're killing after Fox. Well, it wasn't Fox that this is the thing that was supposed to be Michael Keaton. Oh. And, but he, when they From changed Batman. their mind, he said that they were going to keep him alive. He didn't want to do a full series. He would have been so too good. He would have been way too good. He wouldn't have been able to do that unhinged Fox thing where he's just normal and a bit sad and then he just starts shouting. <laughs> He'd he would have been a good convincing. lock. Lock was a fantastic lock. So that's oh, fine. that was a great lock. He would have been one of the good bad guys, like Jacob or his brother. They would have been like if they got someone yeah. good for that, it would have been a lot better. They were crappy. Exactly. Between the clips. Uh, this is just continuity stuff. Cindy appears in another flashback on the plane, helping Charlie not to die in the bathroom. And this is where the others thing comes in again. She was at the, the bathroom Charlie's in is at the very front of the plane. And that's yes. sort of the last thing she's doing before the plane begins to malfunction. Yet she was on the tail section of the plane when it uh, ripped in half. She obviously knew so it was coming, right? She did a runner. Yeah, she legged it to the back where she thought maybe I'll be safer for some reason. Maybe she was trying to go and hide in the bathroom man you'd probably be better off just sat down with a seatbelt oh, probably to and be honest then, it's a bit of a risk but she she doesn't seem like someone that would take that risk or is she, and she doesn't appear for the rest of season one but then she comes back at the start of season two as a part of this little group of survivors from the bad others Play. others that's what Jin shouts isn't he others others as he, he says does he say that she orders a lot. the other 48 days season two episode seven there is a, a sweet sweet beach and sun and sand and there is a whooshing sounds and bits of fuselades hit the beautiful ocean there is slow motion of people decapitated airplane parts one of them is attendant Cindy. She is out of breath, hurt. She is in the thinker pose and her hair is wet. A big dude turns up. Mr. Echo, I say, trying to dredge my memories. Excuse me, Cindy looks up. Would you look after these children? There are two Walton-looking children. They stare at Cindy. There is something I have to do, says Echo. He does one. She nods. Hey, okay, mate. Is she Australian? Echo says to the girl, stay with this nice woman forever. I guess I he has know. observed her movements and trusts her. Basically, yeah, I think he's seen that she's in a flight attendant costume. No one like could be a flight body. attendant. Exactly. No one German could be an evil man. Exactly. Um, <coughs> this is a few clips chopped together. If you didn't notice, this isn't the actual clip where it just heavily focuses on Cindy. But um, my pro for the being in others is when he approaches her, she's got her head in her hands and she looks quite guilty or remorseful. She doesn't really look surprised. She looks like there's a sense of guilt on her face. Um, the con is she does not have that sense of guilt when she's in the water. She looks just as shocked as everybody else. And again, um, you would have to be pretty hardcore and prepared for this situation. She doesn't look like she is. The, this is where the pregnant thing comes in. People say that she looks to be clutching her stomach when she's coming out of the water. Mm. So, like, um, they say, and then she obviously is instantly asked to care for these two kids. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a stretch, but I can see it. If There was probably a point where they didn't know on Lost how often they were going to, um, how, how, how long they were going to go on for and who was going to get a flashback eventually. So they might have just been throwing in little things at this point with characters that they didn't know and whether they were going to be bigger later. Yeah, so they could have gone back to that, but I think it's a weird and dark storyline to do, but not acknowledge it. So I'd say that there's maybe some, maybe they were going to go back and say that was a situation of Cindy became a bigger character. So did the aeroplane make them all pregnant? Or was that, yes. just, was that Josh Whedon? Yes, that's his biggest. Uh, and then he fired them all for it and oh, called them fat. Is that what he did? Yeah, he's a bad man. I heard that he was a bad man, but he's different from this guy. JJ Adams made this show, right? No, but it's the same guy. <laughs> and, and what's the other guy called? Debrum Linda Flindermorf. He yeah, made this. The, guy, the one from Blur. And the one right. in Gorilla. Clip three. Yeah, between the clips. <laughs> and the last thing I said about clip two is that she is a woman of her word. He asks her to look after those children, and by God, she does. By <laughs> God, she does. She knits um, them new hats. This is the biggest between the clips. There's a full episode. Episode basically about those survivors, which is that from clip two. Oh, yeah. So she's in basically the others arrive on the first night and kidnap half of them and then just continue to do so for like a week to 
taking a few people at a time until there's like eight people left and the kids get taken on Cindy's watch um, which isn't good for her not actually on her she doesn't wear a timepiece um, they're not <laughs> sitting they're not <laughs> literally sitting on her on her wrist when they're no, taken no. Um, then the others also at the same time blew up the boat that Jin, Michael and Sawyer were on and then they saw Walt they escape didn't they and, uh, did they anyone really die in Lost or did they just all keep kind of semi-dying no people fully died but uh, not this early on really um, but yeah they all meet up basically Cindy and the gang meet up with Michael Jin, etc and uh, there's two guys called Nathan and Goodwin and then they all move inwards to avoid any more trauma who's the, the Wizard of Oz what isn't the Wizard of Oz in it sometimes you know, there's a guy called Henry Gale who's uh, apparently his balloon crashes on the island that's not true is it no it turns out to be there is a guy called Henry Gale whose balloon crashes but he's already dead interesting and uh, Henry Gale is Dorothy's uncle and she gets to Oz via balloon clip three oh, season yeah. two uh, basically they, they they think the wrong guy's an other and Cindy adds fuel to the fire and says yeah it's definitely him and then he gets throw him murdered in a pit. they throw him in a pit yeah. and then it turns out he, he's murdered the next day murderedly yeah. murdered and then uh, now they're all paranoid and moving through the jungle yeah they're all moving through the jungle clip 3 season 2 episode 6 abandoned the gang is in a clearing cello music a stream Michael cravat guy Cindy headband and backpack. Some ominous cello. Cello. Sawyer is in a homemade hammock. Dead or just resting? Jim swings on a tree. They pass Sawyer up the bank. Cindy has a very big bag and she is at the back. There is huffing and grunting and lots of fast struggle. Get that hammock up that hill. Cindy passes them a big stick. She is out of breath even though she appears to not have done anything. More passing, more carrying, more stirring music. Anna Louise, I don't remember the names of these characters, looks around. Cindy! There is a mysterious sound and breathing sound monster. Cindy! Where's Cindy? We pan to a clunking, mysterious music. Cindy, Cindy. Libby looks on, cravat man. She was just, Cindy. Did they take her? Thunder sounds. How can she be gone? Anna Louisa gnarls. I'm going after her. Echo says, no, we stay together. He, there is swirling around them. The camera's going mad. We, we, we split up. We give them what they want. All of this is your fault, says feisty Anna Louisa at Echo, points at him. We should have never gone through the jungle. I don't... Did you watch Lost? Yeah. I didn't realise you'd watch it at all. You have a much more uh, concise grasp of what's going on than I assumed you would. I watched everything and somehow I lost interest like about three episodes into the last season. But I also watched the last one or two episodes. So I literally have seen everything except for like 12 episodes almost at the end. Oh, yeah. I never I did the opposite I gained more and more interest as it went on because it just kept getting wackier this was my first TV show I'd say other than The Simpsons that I uh, that was on whilst I was at the correct time an appropriate age yeah it was on like I have to go back and watch anything like Twin Peaks or The Simpsons or like Buffy or anything like this was the first one that I watched from start to finish I would say contemporaneously yeah. and they're, they're carrying that guy in a hammock this could be up to um asked for four thousand dollars and they said no so he refused to walk for three episodes he was saving money and it so once that he was the... saved enough he just jumped up and said come on let's go there's a there's yeah. a helicopter there's a time machine there's a giant foot with no leg let's get on that polar bear i'm in a little triangle <laughs> Where's, that, the, uh, where's, where's my love triangle gone? Exactly. It became a rhombus eventually. Love rhombus. Love rhombus. Um, in classic Lost fashion, this clip is from the episode before clip two. The one? So they show show what happens to Cindy and then they let you get to know her a little bit in order to probably try and make it have a bit more impact. Uh, so we'd already seen her go missing before you saw her get the kids and all that stuff. And um, I do like Libby's there as well. And Libby is my favourite. Libby is by far the mod because she is killed. It's that simple. Spoiler. However, spoiler. however, uh, if Cindy is the mod, this would be her alone again, natural diddle. Who's and her 
wrote. Who's her Ned? Who's her Gary Todd? Cruz, Zach and Emma. <laughs> Who's her Rod? The whole family. Zach and Emma. Both of them. Echo. Are there any crossovers between Buffy and Lost? Uh, no. So what, he Zero. already. So he'd already before he started making Lost, he'd already alienated all the cast of Buffy. Basically, yeah. He'd already called them all fat, and then thought, "I'm going to change change names and shapes and start a new show as JJ Abrams." JJ Abrams. Um, exactly. Joss Blackbridge. Um, Damon a- Lindell Upper Lin- Lindell Lower Ince. Precisely. <laughs> um, the last she, I also wrote she didn't grab our attention with memorable catchphrases or comical accents. I know that um, one clip four she, no not even close <laughs> <laughs> the last time you see her in that is her stretching over to pass Libby a stick and, what happens uh, as a, you look at the tree set up there isn't really a situation where she could have been kidnapped here it's trapped like, there isn't it there's either a tunnel or um, she was already another and she just literally is hiding under just the cliff while they're looking for her She's just crouched down. Yeah, it could be. If you got caught, it would really. Uh, she likes secrets, though, doesn't up. she? Like with that b- bottles of vodka and stuff. She's probably she's probably just playing a trick. It seems like it. either that or she saw kids. The kids sort of like beckoned her over and told her to be quiet, so she went with them. Um, is the woman's the name Anna Lucia? But is the woman's name Anna Lucia? That is correct. She's a very unlikable person. So did she? She's been cancelled now, right? I don't think so. She got cancelled mid long. Rodriguez. Is that her real she's name? Michelle Rodriguez. She's basically the uh, female Vin Diesel or Jason Statham. She, I thought they were good guys though. She played and everything. Or they just, she's just a one one character kind of thing. Yeah, she's big. She's like a big character in the Fast and Furious <sighs> franchise, and um, she was in Resident Evil. But people don't she's like her. About. Yeah, people generally don't like. Her. I like Anna Lucia as a character, but she is a very unlikable person. I've never met her, so I don't know. I, I mean the. Michelle Rodriguez is probably fine, but Anna, I like Anna's character despite her being very unlikable. Is oh, what I'm okay. I say. thought the real actress. I thought I'd heard about her getting up to rum stuff in the news back in the day, but who knows? Well, both her and Libby were arrested for DUIs mid-season right. two, and then they were both killed off in the same scene in an episode called Two for the Road, And then, oh. they, but they always denied that that was because of the DUIs. So DUI, that's an American term. That means dancing under... <laughs> Under ice, or what is that? Is that a kind of a show? I think it's dunking under Indiana. Oh, I mean, that like would, basketball that, underground, that, in, that. like an underground basketball ring. Like nobody would, club. I can see why that would get you cancelled. Where is my mod? Clip four. Uh, yeah, the only, like, between the clips, we basically don't know anything. She got taken, and she was either brainwashed or willingly learned the lifestyle of the others. Well, this is where it heats up, isn't it? Season three, episode nine, Stranger in a Strange Land. Fox is in a cage. He's wearing a dirty muscle shirt. <laughs> what What should he hands out, he says. The well-dressed others stir at him like he is in a human zoo. Insect songs and quiet gongs. It is tense. He looks away. Cindy arrives. He's wearing, she is wearing a pale blue shirt and her hair is mostly dry. Hey, Jack. He huffs a bit. Do I know you? He points. H15. It's you. <laughs> He is emotional. He looks close. You were the stewardess. She nods and slides. It's all a bit cultish. Huh, huh, shrug. What are you? What are you doing with them? I thought you were taken. You were captured. Cindy shakes her head a little, but maybe not shakes her head. What? It's not that simple. He bites his lip. He looks intense. What are they doing here? And what are you doing here? She looks away. Heavy lids. We are here to watch, Jack. He looks. Watch what? She gulps. Uh Uh-huh. The girl arrives. What is it, sweetheart? Said Cindy. Fox looks. The girl whispered something and Cindy smiles. It's all a bit wicker, man. She wants to know how Anna Lucia is doing. Fox looks in disbelief at Cindy. <laughs> he, he huffs and sniffs and turns away quickly. Then he turns back. Are you serious? Cindy looks with an ambiguous look on her face. She shakes her cultish head and half smiles. Shouting Fox shouts. <laughs> You've got something to watch. Go watch it. Go, go, go. Cindy can barely believe this caged man 
man's rudeness, they turn <laughs> away and walk off. Yeah, this is mental. This is. Um... We thought this would be the most serious of our shows so far, and in many ways, it is the most ridiculous. Oh yeah, it's uh, that's, I, the weirder it got, the more people that checked out have lost, the more I signed up. Um, this being a good out, example, sign me up. Exactly. I remember the TV. This is how into lost I was. I remember the TV teaser for this at the time was this clip of him shouting, uh, "If you've got something to watch, Cindy, go watch it." And then it showed Cindy, and oh, I just remember no. being like, my mind was blown at that time. Cindy was even back, <laughs> and, like, and they just shown it in the trailer. You were running like, around at school shouting to everyone Cindy's back essentially yes because you used this was to a time lost... Natalie Balloon Manticore would have been uh, very excited about this probably me more than her firm lost but friends probably, FLS she probably humoured me well <laughs> this episode is often named by fans as the worst episode ever um, it is a the flashbacks in this episode most of it's about Jack in a cage people just keep coming over talking to him there's a bit of other stuff um, and the flashbacks are just about how he made the decision to get his tattoos and at that point, the writers were like, yeah, I think we should uh, set an end date for this and keep let's, it more let's concise. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap yeah, this up. We don't need a full episode on Jack looking through tattoo booklets. Considering, again, there's like five or six characters at that point that we do nothing about, but we're on like our seventh Jack flashback and we're seeing how he's getting his tattoos. We're getting we're getting oh. flash sideways at this point. <laughs> this flashback, flag forward, flash sideways. Yes, yeah, not sideways for now, but like, um, she seems very calm. She seems just how she was on the flight, but a bit more out of it. Like she's very calm and professional. Um, she continues to look after the children, honouring Echoes, which is despite her not knowing that all of her friends are now dead. Um, that entire group of people that she was with in that last scene, there's only Jin. Jin and Bernard, I think, who are still alive, and Michael, but he's gone. Is um did did Cindy know anybody on the plane before the crash? Presumably the other flight attendants and the pilot, but none of them. She never asked about the survival of anybody. She also knew Gary Troop, obviously, unless he was just stalking her. G Troop. Yeah, the turbine guy. Um, Cliff but she's, she is encouraging him. <laughs> stop, stop it. I'll tell you when I'm done. She's, um, she's encouraging them to watch. But she's looking after the children, but she's encouraging them to watch. And I think the thing they're watching is like a branding ceremony for a traitor. So it is very um, like culty. A culty. A tricky word to say. Um, but that's what but they're trying again, to show, isn't it, at the beginning? They're trying to make you think the others are kind of like a, a cult, but then they start, start dropping in that maybe it's like a science thing. Yeah, but it, it ultimately is basically a religious cult. Like the science thing is a separate group initially. and the religious group purge them but then there's a few random stragglers and the others seem to pick up random new recruits basically like Cindy but I don't know what happened to all the other people they kidnapped from the tail section whether they're just there also others or whether they were just murdered getting um, the urge to watch this TV show but it's just too many hours is there like a video on YouTube that'll tell you everything that happened there's a very good series on YouTube called Lost Explained by this guy who I can't tell if it's an author automatic AI voice or if it's a human voice but either way the videos are uh, he's basically so far covered everything that was a mystery on Lost and covered it well with enough evidence from within episodes without having to like, guess stuff and I would highly recommend that series probably, to any it, Lost probably fan. like if you want to watch everything probably like more episodes than the actual length of Lost itself though, right? there's a lot of episodes but they're all like 10 minutes mostly some of them are like 20 but depends on the scale there isn't a Cindy video yet come on Lost explained man make it happen we'll do a collab um, my last note on that is that uh, she sounds guilty when she's talking to him and asking about Anna and stuff like she still wants to connect on a human level but he ain't having any of it can you hear that? I have watched all of these at some point anyway but um, yeah it's a great series what if I told you I was the person who could answer the most important question in the world that's good. Can you hear that? I can. Great one. I don't know how many he just did one two days ago. Yeah, that's yeah. the only one I've not watched. It's like 45 minutes, actually, that one. Oh, he's not done that many, right? No, there's not like... loads. I think there is a video where they're all together, maybe. There's like a, there we go, that theory of everything that's five and a half hours. 
Well, this, this one's here is like 30 episodes, right? So I'm guessing that this one is all 30 episodes together, is it? I think so, yeah. That would make sense. Uh, I watched that's that. Great and, series. That's, better than, that's better than watching like, well, how many episodes were there? Like 100? More. There's probably like a, probably like 120, 118 maybe. 121. Nice. Um, but yeah, there's also the thing, somebody did this a few years ago and you can download it, but this is a big commitment. But they, it's called Lost Chronologically and it's just everything in the correct time time order oh yeah i like that idea but i'm going to start with lost explained watch that stuff. yes um okay, fine. between the clips she's still on that. You know, she's still another three years pass between clips four and five right uh, you see her talking to Locke as another about tidying up or something and then she's sad when Locke won't murder his dad and then uh in season six at the start after three years have passed she sees everybody at the temple and says something like they were on the flight that brought me here yeah so, um, didn't get she that. remembers everybody she's not like completely brainwashed yeah, I don't remember yeah. any of this bit, so maybe I didn't watch that much, very carefully. This one now uh, is this clip five is from like probably after, just after you dropped out. It's like season six, episode five or something. Yeah, how many seasons were there? Uh, there's only six. Okay, yeah, so I think I'd probably just just given up the ghost here. Season six, sundown, episode six. There is a long hippie herd man. We, we, we we're all safe here. They are in some kind of temple grounds. As long as we stay in the temple, he can't touch us. Cindy is now a hippie. Wool shirts and long hair. You can hear him. Jacob's dead. She has a coloured strip in her hair. It is not safe here anymore and we can take that risk. She still has this, that girl with her. Same one, I ask. Hippie man with his round glasses doesn't know what to do. He looks around. Everyone listen. He can't come in here. The hippies head for the door and the Chinese dude with a t-shirt runs in. Cindy favours favourite on the hand shoulders, but only with the girl, not the boy. When you say the Chinese dude with a t-shirt, do you mean Fu Chengyu? And it's not shit kind of. No, Fu Chengyu is the head of the uh, China Sinopec National Isle. He he was not a character in Lost. There's a there's oh, yeah. an Asian chap who's not the Korean Jin, but I don't remember quite who he is. He's an Asian American chap. Oh yeah, so his mm-hmm. name is Miles, and he can talk to dead people. Oh, and his yeah. father is um, Pierre Shong. Miles Strom. Yeah, he's a spiritualist. To born in March '77 to Lara and Pierre Shong. At the age of four months, he was taken to California by his mother. Yes, he was born on the island. Uh, Miles is a great character anyway, but irrelevant to this. Uh, Cindy's priority three years in is still to protect these two kids. It is the same two kids um, who initially wanted to get back to their mother in the real world, but clearly that's gone out the window. They're not asked anymore. So a combination of brainwashing, I think, slash probably Cindy and them being told that they would never be allowed to leave for whatever reason. So they just, she decides that this is what she seems to do. She hedges her bets and just joins the strongest party after a while, doesn't she? Um, the man who looks like John Lennon with the John Lennon hair and the John Lennon glasses. Oh, yeah, Lennon, is, as I call him. Yes, Lennon. His name is Lennon. Um, he knows her name, so maybe she has a bigger role within the others now um, in that she's not. Maybe she's rise like, up through the ranks at this point. She's sort of a person. Um, she's all about the Jacob stuff now as well, which is fun. Um, but So it's seems like she's fully absorbed into this you know like religion and way of life after three years and uh it's just funny just again she went from being a, her first lines on the show were like ladies and gentlemen can you take your seats the plane is about to crash to like coming back season six and being like um jacob the god of the island is gone how can we protect the uh temple from the smoke monster and that's quite just a, a minor character quite a journey. it must have been quite quite fun for kimberly joseph to uh be involved in to think that you've got quite a generic role on a wacky show to then have it become wackier over time who is this kimberly joseph i think she was the she created buffy <laughs> oh right is she the one that made the, the suicide squad with with dc yeah she took over justice league from uh principal snyder <laughs> <I'm sick. laughs> I, yeah I'm just, uh, my last note about that one is uh if i was on loss i would probably go down the same trajectory as cindy um but i wouldn't look after the two kids uh i just imagine after seeing three years of concrete evidence it's not a mystery after a while this island like she's been around long enough to see that there is a smoke monster and there is a temple and there isn't like noises in the jungle and ghosts and shit so she's just fully like she's like yep yeah, this is this is reality and i am on board 
board, I will join you. Why not? I'm up for all this. Now, if I was on the Lost Island, I would have curled up in the fetal position on the beach and waited to be rescued seven seasons later. Oh, yeah. That's so, what Saeed did. So basically, the second, the last episode everyone talks about with like the fake, like God church. But the episode before is when like a, a stray uh, kind of like ferry comes by and picks them all up, right? Yeah. They all get on. They just, say, bye, bye, island. Bye. They go around like the beach, like two or three minutes and realize that they're just on Blackpool. There's a theme Black park. And, and Jacob stood there going, I would have got away with it, etc., etc. And then he's yeah, really stabbing. Um, stabs him in the bum and he, and he dies from gout. Exactly. And then Jack is chasing cake across the tram line. And he, uh, he gets hit by a tram. I love hexagon. Exactly. <laughs> My um, love, my love dodecahedron has caught up to me at last. Precisely. All of the ladies and he's just screaming at them all to leave. Um, go! Between the go. clips, uh, Cindy and the watching? kids leave. <laughs> we have to go back. We have to go back to Blackpool. Cindy, the kids and all the others who leave the temple are offered the chance to live by the smoke monster if they join him, also known as Locke. Locke's so the smoke they, monster? Yeah, Locke died in like season five. He was he was about to kill his <laughs> He was about to kill himself. And then Ben, the Henry Gale guy, the uh, Wizard of Oz yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, I know him. The lead brother. He um, talks him out of killing himself. And then and like murders a minute him. later <laughs> murders him and makes it look like suicide. It's, very, it's a very dark and comical situation. It is the kind of like, thing you'd expect from the creator of Firefly. It is absurd. But um, yeah, then upon bringing Locke's body back to the island, because that happens off the island, Locke leaves. He's empty. And um, basically, Locke, Locke is in a coffin when the second plane crashes. It's empty. And uh, no, the coffin is not empty this time. It's full of Locke. But it happened the first. Basically, when the first plane crashed and the smoke monster took Jack's dad's body, from what I can tell. Who is and the he smoke also, monster? You know, that large black cloud of smoke. Yeah, but if Locke's the smoke monster, who was the smoke monster in seasons one to four? Five. Jack's dad. Jack's dad was the smoke monster. How did that happen? Slash also. Basically, like Echo's brother is also the smoke monster. And like, None it of this makes sense. As, it can appear as dead people, but only ones that are on the island, I think. So the smoke monster can be anybody who's died on the island. All right. I'm going to watch those videos Locke, and it'll probably make sense more. Yeah. Basically, when Locke takes that body, the smoke monster is Jacob's brother overall, but then oh, yeah, it takes Locke's body in the, of season six, basically. And so Locke, Locke for the last season is actually dead and he's just the smoke monster in Locke's body. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Cindy decides to join up with it. That's him. ridiculous. Yes. And uh, Does he, if you if you, touch, wanna, is, if you touch but, him, is he made of smoke? No, they're sort of like if someone blows at him, does he actually kind of like float away? Uh, like if he, he no, they never really explain how he, he put, works. He accidentally like, puts a fan on because he's a bit hot and he and he like uh, he destroys right. himself. Now, he seems to be able to turn into people. He can also do that thing where he can read people's souls. None, so. of, this is, none of this makes sense. This all seems like it's all slapped together with no rhyme or reason. I That's believe it was earlier on. I don't think it was. I don't think it was scrambled together at the end. I think it was. Scrambled scramble together at the start. <laughs> But you think that they went into it after the first few episodes, knowing kind of how it could kind of pan out over like six or seven seasons? I don't think they knew the time frame, but I think they I think they knew what the smoke monster was and the Jacob stuff. I think they knew that stuff was going to ultimately that it wasn't just a plane crash. Basically, there was this going to be like an island god and stuff. But other than that, I don't think they had anything set in stone. Pretty cool, though. It's isn't half it? and half. Like they were quite clearly making it up as they went along, but um, they did have like a sort of ending loosely in mind this tv but, uh, show has a loose improvised feel yes it does annoy me when people say they were just making it up as they go along because that's how you write anything that's how uh, like, not straight this speaking, what we're doing is now. It? we're technically making this up as we go along that's how things <laughs> work i think very very much we're doing that i don't think any, anyone would doubt that but some people <laughs> what they do is they plot out the whole thing and then they write the whole thing then they do it that's called a script yes but that initial plot in it was making it up as they went along well obviously it didn't oh it's not existed since the dawn of time so at some point they had exactly. to but but i think people are not people are not saying oh this is this wasn't this didn't come out with a big bang 
people are saying they started writing this, got himself into a whole bunch of trouble by adding more and more and more things to that mystery box and then never opened it. I agree. And I think that was past. I've seen them before said Twin Peaks and The Simpsons were two of the biggest influences, which helps us. Helps us. Um, what did they say about Silicon Valley? They love it. And The Office. They do actually. Charlie at one point mentions that he's a, a, a girl Charlie's dating in a flashback says that her dad works for a paper company in Slough. Yeah. Um, he's, he's from Chester, right, Charlie? From Manchester, I think. No, the actor. Oh, I don't know. I know the character. There's two characters on Lost from Manchester. So his name's Dominic Monaghan, right? The the original one, um, like the actor. Pippin, Mary. Um, Dominic. Famous for Mary. Yeah, he, he's from Stockport. Nice. Yeah, I know he'd just come off the back of the Lord of the Rings trilogy when well, he got he's a, Lost. he's a Hobbit as well, isn't he? I thought yeah, the Hobbit came He's one of the only people I knew. I think going into Lost, he was one of like three people that I uh, knew from something beforehand. Did you know him from, from being... Um, um, Hetty Wainthrop's sidekick, Jeffrey and Hetty Wainthrop Investigates. I did. <laughs> Not. Um, did you know him from the TV show Wild Things with Dominic Monaghan? I believe that's afterwards. I don't know. Don't the know. time timelines have got mixed up a little bit. He's It was a time displaced documentary. He actually made it before okay. Lost. And in real life, Love Rhombus, he, uh, he and Kate dated for several years and then she went on to play an elf in The Hobbit. Yeah, she's also um, the Wasp in... Uh, Man. It is. It makes me happy to know to no extent that uh, one of the survivors is now an Avenger. Very good. Looking forward to Ant Man three. Quadrophenia. Oh, Cindy will uh, return. Clip six. You remember Cindy. <laughs> last recruit Locke is leading them across a field they are depressed except for Cindy who is a hippie time travel I ask Locke puts his hand on Cindy's shoulder Fox looks back friends um, <laughs> somebody's to Locke Coney to Locke where are you going Locke says I want to make sure nobody gets left behind Fox has a gun <laughs> Locke is chugging away up to something no doubt they walk, cut to beach, they look to sky, Fox gets shouts, get down, Locke is calm, is Cindy even there? Does she get thrown dramatically through the air? IDK. Exactly. Um, Cindy has really navigated this island particularly well. She's one of the only surviving uh, oceanic people and she's now also one of the only surviving others after making the correct choice once again to join Locke and just be like, yeah, um, I'm going to do what you say because if I don't, you're going to kill me. There's no um, brashness with Cindy. She's very much just like, no, this is what has to be done. So um, talk about shattering the glass ceiling, I wrote. <laughs> She's also talking to this guy very confidently, this uh, smoke monster lock, considering at this point she knows that he is a smoke monster. To, to even ask where he's going is bold. Um, she's, she's, that glass ceiling has been shattered every time she opens her mouth. Yeah, and that is her last line, I think, where you're going. This is okay. chronologically, this is her last appearance on Lost. And what she's really um, saying is where are we all going, really, isn't it? Is exactly. she's, she's the everyman or every woman in this in Lost. Where were we ever going? Um, where are we going sideways? So she's 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 supposed to be there and the kids are supposed to be there because they're still with that group when everybody gets firebombed. But she is not actually there. Like the actress and the character both are not in that scene. Um, which to me, and this is a, a bit of a spoiler for Twin Peaks The Return, but um, it reminded me of like the thing they did with Audrey we just sort of it, it leaves the show and you have absolutely no idea what the context like is she dead or alive like and it sort of like leaves it up in the literally up in the air but then um it is confirmed in some kind of lost follow-up book that they did survive and continue to live on the island under Hurley's peaceful reign. Um, because he becomes the um, the Jacob, right? He does, which was a lovely uh, twist towards the end because it was obviously, you know, always going to be Jack. Um, do, do you know about the Weezer album called Hurley? Yes. Are you yes, familiar I with it? I think so. There's not any Lost-based songs on it. But uh, I remember listening to it at the time, and I do. I like Weezer. And the guy at Weezer looks like Lindelof, actually. He is a little bit, but he probably isn't as bad. He's probably a good guy. Probably didn't write any yeah. Star Wars or Buffy. <laughs> yes, no more Buffys. Let's have a um, listen to one of the tunes off the TV show, Hurley. Yeah, that's rubbish. A lot of Weezer songs yeah. are no good. <laughs> But they got a few good ones as well. Um, clip um, seven? Um, yes, between the clips, 
Um, this is the biggest of anything, the biggest life-wise. Um, confirmed that she lived with Pearly, blah, blah, blah. I like to think that she took on a, like, she was probably a leader of the remaining others at this point and taught them to live under Hurley's order. I imagine she probably had quite a large role. Um, and then at some point in time, at some age, she dies. Oh, we all do. Exactly. But that is before Clip 7. Clip 7. Season 6, episode 1. Flashback, flash forward. LAX part 1. Sad Fox is in the same seat. No tie now. He looks around and remembers. Cindy arrives. So how is the drink? Now he has the tie again. That's not a very strong reaction, she laughs. Don't tell anyone. She hands me a single bottle. It'll be our secret. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I don't know what's going on here. I guess I didn't. Maybe I didn't watch any of season six. Maybe not. Um, full, full lynch mode. They were definitely wanting to emulate that sort of... I'm assuming other people than David Lynch have done things like this, but he's my biggest frame of reference, so I'm just going to keep mentioning him. Oh, please um, do. Like, this is basically to explain in short everybody died at some point as we all do and once you die everything that happened on Lost happened it was all like happened to them whilst they were alive but then after they die this is purgatory now so the flash they're called flash sideways in season 6 instead of flash back or forward and it's showing oh, I know, you what I said, it, I said that about 20 minutes ago yes you did I didn't know what it meant then now I do basically the, you see what would have happened if the plane didn't crash but it's also not that simple like it's been changed like things are different like Desmond's on the plane and um, some people aren't on the plane that were like uh, Shannon and stuff um, and even like the, the line that Cindy says is changed to make it slightly different by the line that Jack says sorry it's all a bit different, different right? all slightly different just a little bit she yeah, only gives so, him one drink instead of two as well but, yeah but they, they are not aware that they are in purgatory um, this is the only sort of real, real note of substance I made for any of these clips but the only thing I really noticed and I didn't go back to double check to see this so it might be wrong but I think in the first clip and in the actual flashback she's moving backwards on the plane because she goes backwards past Jack and he sort of looks over his shoulder to look at her mm. cheeky and um in this one she is moving forwards on the plane and goes like forwards past him and i thought that was to uh indicate her linear journey of survival on the island he is always moving forwards and everyone else is staying where they are so maybe really cindy is the central point of this the eye of the of the lindelof cane twirling towards freedom exactly now there wasn't yeah, that uh... basically that's what that was was um and i have a very i can sum up what happens after that very quickly and then I'm done um, in order to wake up in the sideways timeline like this purgatory timeline they all have to have like a meaningful encounter with someone else from the time on the island so like Hurley and Libby or like Jack and then like Kate and then seeing his like dad's coffin and stuff and like mm -hmm. Locke remembers um, Locke gets hit by a car and remembers being in a wheelchair <laughs> well, he was in a wheelchair a wasn't stuff. he for a bunch of stuff and then he got all Professor X out exactly but then they need to uh so they need to have that experience to remember life and realize that they are dead and then be able to move back into the light of the universe i believe so it's i speculate that in order for cindy to wake up and be able to move on she had to help reunite uh, emma and zach with their mother and in doing so remembered her time on the island with them and was able to die at peace that's good well, that's good that my, that last note right. just, my last note is just i love lost I love Lucy. I love Lost. The Isle of Lost. I'm going to watch those videos. I'm going to get on with them as soon as the show's finished because it looks like a lot of fun. Not a lot of Cindy media. So I found this yeah. picture and I wondered whether this was Cindy. That is uh, Rousseau, I think, the French woman. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. I'd forgotten about her. Was she a, like a major character once they found her? Um, No, again, they never really, they could have expanded her a bit more, but I think the actress got a bit annoyed having to come to Hawaii every like, you know, sporadically. Basically, it was a bit Roswell-ish. It all sounds she, a little bit Area 51. She asked, she, but I think she asked to be Roswell. She basically said, would you kill me? So they sort of, and there was a writer's strife as well that cut things short so she basically had a really abrupt death but then in all the time travel shenanigans um Jin ended up meeting her as a teenager when she first got to the island so we saw a bit of a past is this her who's this one here um, i don't i think it's supposed to be kate no kate no, sat down, the down here right? this is like a kid who's like yeah i don't know maybe that maybe that's just the person whose art this is because i can't oh that would make that sense. And all, whatever the hell is next to lock unless it's a boar <laughs> it does look a bit like a wild more. 
Yeah, yeah, I, can I, I don't know who that's supposed to be. He's the only other one that I thought might on some level have Libby in it somewhere. No, not Libby, Cindy in it somewhere. <laughs> and, but I couldn't work out who it might be, this one. No, but she will. It seems like this one. she'll be on here. I think that's Alex Russo. I don't know who the hell that is next to her. Um, Lennon's nose. Oh, yeah. Go back down to the... There's his dad, dead in the coffin. If she's on it, it would make sense she'd be near the bottom because she came in early. It looks like she, she might have been shafted here. I don't think she's... Uh, she ain't even a, an F list to this person. There's characters who are way less significant on this poster as well. Well, you know, it is up to the artist, whoever that oh, yeah, was. No Cindy. From what Maybe. I can see, no Cindy, though. No Cindy. But so that's he it. should be. Couldn't find a single piece of Cindy artwork on the internet. No, me neither. I did look last night. There's nothing. Which oh, well. adds to the mystery. It just means you've done a, we've chosen a good character. One that definitely nobody else gives two hoots about. Precisely. Are we finished with the song? Let us. A tear could some nab be on ace. Jack is wearing a tie. I'm not wearing a tie at all. <laughs> sweet, sweet barrage. Is Cindy duet? They stir at a Cindy, Satie with this nose. Laring back pace, hill moster. He's wearing a dirty muckles so shirt, human zoom. Hell, this is all your fight, Fiesta locks dog. Fox looks in dire belief, Trumanum's back, Chow Chumbung Fox. Ampne Ong, it's off Knut doesn't appear shlootless. Cindy favour the hand ion, shout a ladder, but inly with the last. Lakak, lakak, slak, kahaltz. Lock Paiute's hands on Cindy's shoulder. Yeah. We have to go back. That, sh that shouldn't be as amusing as this after 70 odd episodes. Yeah. Anyway, well, what was, your, what was your name again? Well, well, five six one four one four. We did it. We certainly did. Another corner of the universe unlocked. Bye. Bye. <laughs>